Bezos Hashem, today's daf is Masechta Baba Basra, daf Chav Ches. And we're going to start by the Mishnah on daf Chav Zayin, Amit Beis, the, the, the last Mishnah before the end of the parak of Lo Yachbar. Okay, so the Mishnah begins. Uh, the Mishnah begins, it's discussing, uh, discussing uh, you have to remove uh, objects that could potentially damage other people. So, Elin Shuhu Noitel Roshus Rabim. If you have a tree in your property that's bending over to the Roshus Rabim, Koitzitz, you have to cut it down, so that the camel can pass by with its rider on top. It doesn't have to, you don't have to cut it down so much, only for a camel carrying flax or or bundles of, of um, so let's see over here, this man has his, his um, tree in the Rishush Rabbim, here's the picture. So according to the Tanakama, uh, you have to cut it down so that the camel with the rider can pass through. And according to Rabbi Yehuda, you just need to cut it down enough so that a camel with a load on it can pass through. Rabbi Shimon, I met, Rabbi Shimon says, Kola Elan Keneged Rabbi Shimon says, he argues. He says that you have to cut the tree down totally perpendicular uh, um, to, to, to the to the Now, Tuma, because there's a possibility of Tuma over here, because if you leave a tree in the Rishus Rabbim, and let's say there's a there's a kazayas of a mace over here, and somebody's going to walk in the Rishus Rabbim, especially a kohen, it could be a problem because you're causing an oil on the kohen, and therefore he's going to become tame. So therefore, you have to cut off all this part of the tree, all this part of the tree, uh, so that uh, it doesn't lean over into the Rishus Rabbim. That is the opinion of Rib Shimon. So the Gemara. Mom, now, the, the Gemara, uh, obviously, when you cut a tree, the branches, it's a temporary fix because years later, years later, the tree is going to go brat, back. And when you're trying to fix something, a problem in the Rosh Hashanah that you caused, uh, who is the opinion? The Gemara wants to know who is the opinion that holds the Nuzokin, Basa, Umdana, the Hashda, Azlinim. All you have to do is make a temporary fix. Uh, and if it's fixed for this moment, that's fine enough. Who is the opinion? That holds like that. Um, uh, that holds like that. You can make a temporary fix. You don't have to permanently fix that. It never happens again. Amr Shlakish Roshlakish says, but Machlokish Nu Yevra Blazi. It's the famous Machlokish, and the opinion of our Mishnah follows Rabbi Eliezer. Tran, we learned in the Mishnah, Ein Oisin Cholo Tachas Roshos Rabbim, Boiris Shrikin Umaris, Rabbi Lazar Matim Bechdei Shitehe Agolam Halachas Tuna Avonim. So uh, we learned in the Mishnah that the Tanakhama holds you can never make a pit underneath the Bishus Rabban because obviously people could fall in. But Rabbi, Rabbi Leza says, well, if you make a, a thing on top of it so that a, a donkey with a load, a wagon load, can pass on it and nothing will happen, then that's okay. So we see that, that Rabbi Leza allows this temporary fix because years later, this, this structure that you see in the picture over here is going to fall through. And Reb Leza says, right now it's good. Well, let's not worry about what's going to happen later in years from now that this structure is going to collapse. Uh, but Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi the Tanakama was very strict and says you can never make a pit underneath the Rishos Rabbim. So our mission that says you can do a temporary fix goes according to Rabbi Leza. So, so Rabbi Yechinen Amma, Rabbi Yechinen, that's what Rosh Lakish's opinion. Rosh Lakish says the author of our mission is Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Yechinen Amma, Rabbi Yechinen says, I feel the tame Rabbonim. You can say our mission goes according to Rabbonim. Over there, the reason why Rabbanon are strict, because sometimes the, 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 the structure, this structure can be compromised, and the, the one that made the structure won't know about it, and then it collapses and it causes damage. Therefore, the Rabbanon are very strict never to make a pit underneath the Rishos Rabim. But according to uh, over here, Whenever there's a blockage, whenever the branches grow back, uh, the Chachamim will say you cut it down back then. It's not gonna. It's not something that uh, that uh, uh, could cause. You're not gonna be aware of. You're gonna always be aware of where the problem is because you see the branches growing, and therefore, therefore the Chachamim will be the author of also of a, a Mishnah that says, listen, if you have a tree that's over over uh, uh, bending over into the Rishus Rabim, we allow you to cut it. We don't require you to cut the whole tree down. Says the Gemara another idea. So the Gemara says, Who requires more of a cut? 
Rabbi Yehuda, who says you have to make sure that the, you have a, the camel with the load. That's uh, Is that a bigger share? This is over the picture. Or is, or is the camel with the rider the bigger share? Who is the bigger share over here? Rabbi Yehuda or the Rabbanan? That require more of a cut. So the Gemara says, Pshita the Rabbi Shura the Rabbanan Nafesh. The Rabbanan require more of a cut. The Isakadai to Shura the Rabbi Yehuda Nafesh, if you want to think that the Rabbi Yehuda requires more of a cut, Rabbanan Bashur the Rabbi Yehuda Hecha Avdi. What would Rabbanan do with the with the with the with the measure of Rabbi Yehuda? In other words, if Rabbi Yehuda requires more, then what would happen if a guy uh, uh, is carrying a load? How is he going to pass through? If the Rabbanan say that all you have to cut is is a smaller shear, so then it will not allow the camel with the load pass through, and that's and and, and that's the whole problem. When you have a when you have a blockage in Rosh Hashanah, you have to take care of it. Valamai. So what must you say? Shu Durban Nafesh. Durban require more of a cut. You have to more cut more of your tree off. So then the question is, Rabbi Yehuda be Shu Durban Amai of it. What's Rabbi Yehuda going to do with the shear of Durban? Let's say a guy who who's who's riding, and according to Rabbi Yehuda, it's enough to cut the tree so that the load passes through. But if you're going to have a rider, imagine this rider passing through to this this tree. How is he going to get through? Uh, how is he going to get through if Rabbi Huda only required a smaller cut? And says the Gemara, Rabbi Huda can deal with that because Rabbi Huda Aima, because Rabbi Huda will say, after the Gochem Chalaf to say, he can a, a person can bend and go underneath the branches. A low doesn't bend; it doesn't. Uh, it's it's you know it's one height, but a a a um, a human being can bend and pass through. So that's why it'll be good according to uh, Rabbi Huda. Rab Shimon Aimer, Rab Shimon says, "Call Ilan Kinegan Hamashkoyles Bnei Atuma." Tana, we learned in the Brisa, Bnei Oil Atuma. So the Gemara says, "Mepnei Pshita, Mepnei Tuma, Mepnei Tuma Tana." We understand that the reason why um, that Rabbi Yehuda says you have to cut the whole tree is because you may have Tuma underneath the tree. So, of course, and and that's what the Gemara just explained. Um, that that the, the Brisa explains Mepnei Oil Atuma. So why do you need the brisa? Why did the Gemara bring down the brisa? I mean, I understand the Mishnah's reason, so you don't have to need the brisa to add the word oyha hatuma to explain it even further. So the Gemara says, if ima masnisen, the, the brisa always explains the Mishnah much clearer. Now, if you just learned the Mishnah strictly the way it is, mipne hatuma and habamina, and not because of oyha hatuma, dilma maisa oyev tuma v'shadi hasem v'sagi le b'dachdu le b'dachdu le b'alma kamash malam. That maybe a bird will. The problem of the Mishnah was the way the Mishnah learned is that the reason is that maybe a bird is going to bring a little piece of, of mace on one of the branches, and a person will will go underneath. Let's say it's the the, the tumma is stuck between two branches, and and the human being will be tummy because the tumma goes up and down. The the mace the tumma the mace goes up and down. So according to the Mishnah, all I would have to do is cut every other branch so that no you know, piece of flesh could be no piece of a mace can be stuck between two branches. So, but the, uh, so if you learned that's the pshat in the Mishnah, then maybe the Mishnah, maybe Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon is saying you just have to cut every other branch, but that's it. So from that, the Bryce is to, from that you need the Bryce to tell you that the reason of Rabbi Yehuda is not because you, of a tumma landing by a bird on top of the branches, but is because because over here, maybe the tomb is on the floor and you're causing an oil hot tumma, a, 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 a tenth of a tumma, which will tama the person. And that's the reason Rabbi Huda is, Rabbi Shimon is saying, not that you cut every other branch, but you totally have to cut off the half of the tree perpendicular to the Rishul Sarabim. And so this ends, Hadra Allah, Lo Yachbar, this ends, this is Perak of Lo Yachbar. Now we go into the Mishnah of Cheska Sabatim. Cheska Sabatim, to presumptive to be the owner of a house, or a pit, or a cistern, or a, or a, or a cave, or a, or a bird coop, or a mechitzois, or a bathhouse, or a bathhouse, or an olive press, or a shlochen. Beis shlochen is, is a irrigated field. The Beis shlochen is a field that has a, a, a self, it, it waters itself because it has a, it has a, um, it has a uh, well in the field. Ba'avodim and slaves. V'choshu aysa peris tada. Anything that constantly is producing. So what what are we talking about over here? A guy uh, owns something, right? So uh, if so, we're trying to say when do you assume that he is the total owner of this item, the house, of the property, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
when do you say that he's the total owner and he doesn't have to prove himself that he owns it, is if you see, if you see him staying there for three years, every day he's there, then he's the presumptive owner. So if some other owner says, oh, this property was mine, and he says, oh, you sold it to me, but I don't have the star, I don't have the deed, I don't have the proof of sale, I don't have the receipt that you sold it to me. So the, the Mishnah says that that's okay if you live there for three years. If during the first three years he comes to you and says, hey, I, that's my property, and you tell and you say you sold it to me, so give me the receipt to prove, prove, prove me that I sold it to you. But if the, the guy who stayed there for three years, for three years, and the... Uh, then he doesn't have to keep the bill of sale for three years. So we assume now that he's the proof, he's the uh, complete owner. Because if there was a problem, why didn't why didn't the original owner come come in the first place and say, "Oh, you're on my property"? So therefore, once after three years, you are now the presumptive owner of something. Today, habal. But now the Mishnah says, um, "Let's." The, sometimes you don't have to be on a field for for three years straight. Sometimes you have a field that only produces seasonally. So today, habal. You have a, a a field that that uh, that produces because it's not an irrigated or it's a watered field that has its own uh, self well in the field, natural spring in the field. But it's a it's a field that grows wheat on it uh, during uh, during the season, one time a year. So then, you can make a chazaka for three years, but you don't have to be there every day. So how how many, how much time do you have to be there? Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel says, Gimel Chadashim Barishayna. The first year you have to be there for the last three months of the first year. Okay, that you're planting the last three months of the first year. Gimel Bachroina, and the last three months of the last year. So year three is the first three months of the last year, and the last three months of the first year, and 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 the and the whole In the third year, you have to be there the full twelve months. So let's Hareze Yud Chaydish. And that's the opinion of Rabbi Shmuel. In other words, he holds that this idea of three years is only by a field that produces constantly. But if you have a field that produces once a year, then the Shir Chazaka would be 18 months. So it would be the first year, the last three months, then the 12 months of the second year, and the first three months of the third year. Three, 12, and three is 18. And so... So basically, you have a little bit within each year, but not full three complete years, and yet the chazaka will work according to Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva says, same idea as Rabbi Shmuel, but he holds that the during the first year you don't have to be there the first year, the entire year, the year twelve. Yeah, month twelve you can be there. The the twelfth, you know, the last month of the year of the first year. 12 months of the second year and the first month of the third year. So if you have all that together, you'll have 14 months. 14 months is enough to make a chazaka. So Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Kiva just added to the to the Tana of the mission. The Tana of the mission says on a normal situation with a with a with an item that's always in use. So then you have a chazaka, you need the chazaka of three years, from 20, you know, for each day of the of those three years. That means you have to be around that property for for or or something. You're doing something on that property for three years straight, showing the ownership. Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Kiva says, but if it's a seasonal property, sometimes you only have to be there for eighteen months, and sometimes you only have to be there, according to Rabbi Kiva, just for fourteen months. It's the same. Uh, it's uh, that's the machlokes between Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Kiva. Amr Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel says, When did I say my opinion? Bestay loven by a wheat field. That you need actually three uh, three years of a state elam, but let's say you have a uh, a, a fruit bearing field that has different types of fruits. Let's say it has grapes, and let's say it has olives, and let's say it has dates, uh, figs. Each of these fruits ripen at a different time period. So then, even with one year, you can make chazaka. Kana says to if you gather in your grapes, umasek is and during the second part of the year you you cut your olives in the in the in in, in that field. Kana says kitsai, or you brought in your figs and you dried out your figs. So basically you def demonstrated that you own this field by harvesting the three different types of fruits that are on this uh fruit field. So Hare Elu Gimoshonam, then you accomplished your chazaka of three years in one year. Okay? Uh, that's the three three years of chazaka. 
We're going to discuss more about this in the Gemara. But the idea that we see that there's a concept of three of the number three as establishing that it's yours. Um, Rabbi Yechinen, Rabbi Yechinen said, hochi usha I heard from people who, from the old Sanhedrin, uh, uh, that they used to say, where did they come up with this idea of three years that makes it presumptive yours? So the Gemara says, Misharamur, they used to say it comes from the uh, the war and the ox. You know, a Sharamur becomes a Sharamur after three years, three times of goring. So ma sharmud, just like a sharmud, kivin shnaga kimon the gichas nafak leim bechesed kamu kam leim bechesed muah, just like a a a a, a ox moves moves itself from being a tam and becomes a muah after three times a gourd hachanami. So same thing by a field. We don't know it's yours, but kivin the achalolat plus shanim. Since you were already on the field for three years, nafak leim rishus meichel. We know that it does not. It goes out of the seller's. Uh, Prozac domain, the Kaimelam Bishus Rakeach, and it becomes the, the purchaser's domain. In other words, the purchaser doesn't have to prove himself anymore that he owns the field because he was there for three years. So the Gemara says, Imar Sharamur, if you're learning it from a Sharamur, Ad Nagikar Vias, Loy Mechaev, Hachaname, Ad Shanar Vias, Loy Kaimel Bishusay. When does a Sharamur pay full damages, where a Tam only pays half damages during the first three times? By the fourth time, you say, then you pay full damages. So if you're learning Chazaka from Shara Mu'ad, then let's say that until you're there four complete years, then it becomes yours, not three years. So the Gemara says, no, how can you compare? Hasam, by, by goring an animal, Hasam, miking naga, when it gored three times, have a Mu'ad, then it becomes a warned animal, right? The idach, hilay nagach, ma'am but if it doesn't gore for the fourth time, then what's it going to pay? So the fourth time is not what makes it a muad. It's a muad already the third time. The fourth time is just to, to prove the point uh, that he pays full damages, that the ox will pay full damages, and it's no more a tam that gets away with paying half damages. Ha ha, but over here, cave and tlashani, as soon as you eat three years, kaimali it's in your, it's in your, it's, it belongs to the purchaser's domain, and therefore, it's as soon as it, it takes three years pass, it automatically belongs to the purchaser and he doesn't have to prove himself. So now the source that we say uh, that you have to, we have the source that says that you have to, uh, that that uh, the source that says that, that three years is a tazaka, we learn it out from Shar Mu'ad. So the Gemara says, El Me'ata, if that's true, chazaka sheni mimtayim, it have a chazaka. Alama Tanan, why did we learn, call chazaka sheni mimtana in a chazaka? What the Gemara is questioning is, what the Gemara is questioning is over here, is that if you're learning it out from Chazaka She'eni Matana means like this, that if by by Chazaka in our case, if the guy says, oh, that was my property, and the other person says, I didn't know that it was your property, or he doesn't answer, uh, nobody said it, he just says, nobody said anything. He doesn't say, I bought it from you. Then it doesn't work. That's That's not a Chazaka. So, but if you learn from Mu'ad, Mu'ad, Mu'ad works no matter what. Uh, uh, Mu'ad works no, no, no matter what. As long as it gored for three years, no, there's no, the other side doesn't have to say anything. It, the the, the shard becomes a Mu'ad. So why, if you're totally learning it out from, from Mu'ad, why is it that if the person who's being claimed against doesn't say, I bought it from you, then it's not a Chazaka? So Gemara says, time of my, what, what's the reason why we say three years, you're a Chazaka? Because, because the guy is saying, you're going to say, I bought it from you. And the guy says, no, you stole it from me. And we don't know who's the truth. So therefore, once you were there for three years, we assume that you are telling the truth, that you actually bought it. And you, didn't, you don't have the pr proof of sale because you don't have to keep the documents for th more than three years. But if you don't say anything, so how do you know? that you bought it. Maybe you actually stole it. Uh, maybe you actually stole it. Deal me could come up. If you're not going to say anything, then are we going to say it on your behalf? Of course not. So therefore, but Chazak has one step more than a Mu'ad. Mu'ad, uh, by an ox, all we need is three gorings. That's it. By a Chazaka, we need that the guy who's being claimed after three years that it's not his property, he should say, I bought it. And if he doesn't say that, then he doesn't have a chazak. It doesn't mean it's his. He has to say, I know for a fact I bought it. So a couple of questions. Mask of Laura Bavira. So you're saying you need, uh, you need, uh, it's, it's, you're learning it out from Shar Hamur. Elamiata, let us say, Macha Shulay Bafanov, Loy Teheva Macha. 
that if the guy, by uh, Chazaka, uh, uh, if the guy who wants to make the complaint against uh, against somebody on his property, if he goes over to two people and says, you see that guy, he's on, really that property belongs to me. He didn't go over to the person on the property, but he went over to two other people and says, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't make the complaint in front of him, but I'm making a complaint in front of you. You should know that I'm complaining. I'm, I'm, I'm objecting that this guy is on my property. So it wasn't in the presence of the person who, who's doing the chazaka, who, the, the person who's on the property. And that shouldn't work. Work, And we learned later on that works. That's called a macha. Uh, that's called a complaint. A chazaka means you went three years without anybody complaining. Uh, but if somebody complained against you, then you don't have a chazaka. But it, we also know that if the guy complained, not in front of you, but complained to somebody else about you, so then then you don't have a chazaka. But but, but so then... So why by why by shor hamuad that the only time a, sh a shor tam becomes a shor hamuad is only if the owner of the ox is aware that that his ox gored and if he's not aware of that his ox gored the 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 ox does not become a muad if you complete completing if you're comparing chazaka to shor hamuad they should have the same dinim and says the gemara do me to shor hamuad. Um, uh, the Gemara's question is, Ma just like Sharmur, you always need the warning to happen in front of the owner of the ox, af hokinami. So a complaint against him should be befana beinim, should only be in front of the person, uh, uh, you know, squatting on the property, so to speak. So why doesn't it, why does it work a complaint, even if the person on the property is not aware of it? So the Gemara says like that. Hasam over there, who bevalaf. The Torah tells you, you have to warn the owner so he can, actually watch his ox. So he has to be aware that his ox is doing goring. And if he's not aware, then he, the ox does not become a muad. But Ksiv, Hacha over here, by gor, by Hacha over here, by the Chazaka, Chavra, Chavra Islev, Chavra, the Chavra Islev. In other words, you're going to eventually get the report that somebody's complaining against your, that you're squatting on his property. So all you have to do, you don't have to do anything. You, all you just have to do is hold on to your document of purchase for a little bit longer. And the fact that you didn't do that, um, didn't do that, uh, breaks the chazaka that you have. So therefore, uh, it would it would work a machosh loy befonov. We're going to see more about that later on in the, in the, when we learn that mishnah. But machosh loy befonov works by by chazaka, but but when when it comes to an ox, it has you have to warn the owner directly, and uh, and if you don't warn him directly, then the ox does not become a muad. Says the Gemara. Gemara asked just two more questions. Ramea, according to Ramea, the Oma, Ramea says by an ox, it could you could become a muad in one day. Because if the ox gored in, in three separate days, you say it becomes a muad. If the ox gored three times in one day, according to Ramea, it becomes a muad. So let's let's make chazaka in one day. If a guy eats a fig, uh, figs ripen uh, at different hours of the day. You can have a part of the uh, part of the tree's figs ripen at eight o'clock in the morning, and some at twelve o'clock, and some at two o'clock in the afternoon. And one day you can make a you can make a chazaka on a fig. And says Gemara, do me the That wouldn't that wouldn't work because you're saying chazaka has to be like sharmuid. Ma sharmuid be idana the isle hanegicha leisla hanegicha. When you're making one goring, the other goring didn't exist. But if you're eating figs on a tree. Right, so even if you eat the ripened figs at eight o'clock, and then at, at twelve o'clock other figs ripen, they were always on the tree. So therefore, um, therefore that's not considered a chazaka. You would you would still need uh, more time to make a chazaka. So the Gemara says, okay. So the Gemara says, uh, Let's say we're talking about a caper bush, which becomes which 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 don't ripen every hour. But the, the fruit comes out at different times. So let's shorten the chazaka by a caper butch to make it a chazaka. So again, the Gemara answers the same idea. Hasam pear me isa. The fruit itself is there. Maybe it takes a few days till it ripens. And so let's say you want to make a caper bush ripens in, in, in over a course of a week. So you'll take some caper bush on, 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 on Sunday and then Tuesday and then Friday. But still, the fruits are still on the trees. Umigma who the kagama of Azal, it's just finishing ripening. By by a goring, goring of one ox, 
uh, uh, when it gored one ox, the other ox wasn't around. Then it gored the second ox. Then it gored the third ox. So therefore, uh, uh, you can't shorten it. You can't shorten chazaka totally like muad, totally like shara muad, because shara muad, the ox is uh, the, the the ox one ox is when it gored one ox, the other ox was not there. But by a caper bush, the fruit is still on the tree. So you can't say, oh, over a course of a week, we can make this uh, uh, chazaka. So the Gemara just pushes it a little bit further. If you eat alfalfa, it's, uh, the Gemara says like this, I'm sorry, I lost my place. Here we go. That's Gemara's question. If you eat alfalfa, which takes, you know, you could keep pulling at the alfalfa plant for 30 days and continue to eat because you pull it and then it grows further and you pull it out and then you, and then it grows further. So over a 30-day period, you should be able to make a chazaka of, of alfalfa. The answer is the same idea. Just because you pull it out, the, the it doesn't have fruit, but it still will grow back. Hey, chadami, the kadadach v'achal v'kadadach v'achal ha'asam yishmer hu d'kashamet v'achal. Uh, over there, you're going to pulling it out and eat, and pulling out some more alfalfa, and you're eating it that way. But it's still the the the, the plant is still there, and therefore you can't make a chazak on alfalfa plant uh, in in thirty days. So okay, so let's make the halach. Let's make the alfalfa plant a chazaka over three months, because an alfalfa plant, you at the end of thirty days, you pull out the whole alfalfa plant, and a new alfalfa plant plant grows. So. So let's, why does a chazaka have to be three years if you eat three alfalfa plants over the course of three months? In other words, each month you eat one alfalfa plant, so then it should be a chazaka. So why do we need three years? That's the question. The Gemara's question is, why do we need three years? We can shorten it to three months by certain types of plants. And says Gemara, that's true. I agree with that. Man holchi usha rabbi shmol. Who is, who is the, the the ones that went to Usha? It was Rabbi Shema. And that, that, that started this whole thing. The Holchi Usha were the one that said you learn it from Shara Mu'ad. That's what Rabbi Yechanan said in the beginning of the page. Rabbi Shema, nam, hochinami, that you don't need three years by everything. Now we learned in the Mishnah. Shema, let me be medvorm, stay loving. Abba, stay elan. Kanas, tuos, umos, echazes, over konos, eskitze, harei, legil, shaman. Sometimes by a fruit tree, by a fruit uh, uh, field, you can make the you can shorten the whole chazaka business to different fruits. If you if you if you eat grapes in one in one month, the next month you do eating you're cutting the olives. The third month you're cutting the figs. So then you have three years in a shorter period of time. So same idea. If you have a falfa plant and one month you're eating one type of alfalfa plant, then you, you it grows back another alfalfa plant, and you eat that one in the third month a third one. So then you can shorten it. So again, Rabbi Shmuel agrees that you don't have to have three years. You just need three different items. So it's the three years is not a fixed amount. The point of the Gemara is that according to all these opinions, uh, according to especially the way we learn shot like, like, like Rameir, that you don't need three years. You could even shorten it to three, to, to three months, depending on the item that you're trying to establish a chazaka. And we'll see there's another source tomorrow of so, but the bottom line is, where do we learn the number three? We learn it from an ox, it's just like an ox moves from a short tam to a short muad after three times goring. So, also, you can establish ownership of a property if you're there for three years or three something. We'll stop over here.